Are you ready for the ultimate DIY birthday card? Today we're going to supercharge your greetings with the power of the Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll show you how to create an amazing interactive card with a touch sensor, dazzling 5x5 RGB LED display and even a speaker that plays the happy birthday tune. So stay tuned to level up your card game. First up we have the Raspberry Pi Pico, this is the brains behind our birthday card. Then we'll need a touch sensor to activate the card's animation and a 5x5 RGB LED display to scroll the text and to show a picture of the birthday cake. Finally we'll need a speaker to play the happy birthday tune. To power our card we'll use a LiPo battery and don't forget the LiPo battery charger to keep it charged. Lastly we'll use a 3mm 3D printed flat enclosure to house all the components and fit snugly inside the card. With a 3D printed enclosure I designed one myself using Fusion 360. It's quite a simple design and it simply keeps the parts from moving around. Let's get this all wired up, it's quite straightforward. We just need to connect the touch sensor to GPIO 0 on the Raspberry Pi Pico, the buzzer to pin 9, the SDA to GPIO 2 and the SCL to GPIO 3. The battery connects into the LiPo charger using the little JST connector. I've used a little bit of blue tack to hold the pieces in place but you could also hot glue this as well. I've also designed these card covers. For this I've used Canva and it's a free tool online. This is the front of the card that can be folded in half. It's just an A4 sheet of paper and I've also designed another sheet that can be folded in half that goes on the inside and covers up the electronics. It's got these handy markers on so we know where to press and what order to press them in. So over here on the bench you can see that I've got the birthday card and you can see all its electronics there. We can see the buzzer, we can see the 5x5 display and you can also see the touch sensor on the right hand side. So the code for this is actually very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is set up pin 0 to be the touch sensor. So we pass into pin 0 which is the GPIO pin we've got this connected to. We set it up as an input by using pin.in and then we use the pull up resistor so that we don't have a floating value. The loop is also very simple so we say if touch.value equals zero then that means we haven't touched it otherwise print that it has been touched and then just leave for a tenth of a second. So let's give this a go shall we? I'm going to press the, uh, the touch center here and as I press that and I'm very very lightly touching it barely making any contact you can see there that it says touched or not touched. So that's how simple we can use the touch. Let's have a look at the buzzer music next so let's go over to our buzzer demo. So first we can set up the buzzer using pin 9. Now pin Moroni make this really really easy they have a buzzer class that we can use from their, their library so we simply say buzzer equals buzzer 9 and GPIO 9. Next we have a list of all the different notes this is a dictionary of names of the notes and then the actual frequency that those notes are in hertz so there we go we've got all the way down to to ds8 so we've got quite a, a range there and then next what we need to do is build up the song for happy birthday using those notes and our little code will change those notes back into the frequencies and therefore play the happy birthday tune so you can see happy birthday to you. We've then got two helper functions. We have one that's called Playtone that will take in the frequency to play and play it and then we have another one Be Quiet which will stop the sound from playing. That's a really important piece of code to include and then finally we have Play the Song. So Play Song will go through the list of notes and it will then check on our dictionary of notes to frequencies which frequency to play and then it will play that particular frequency and at the very end it will be quiet. So let's give this a go. I'll move the microphone over so that we can hear the happy birthday song playing. had to uncomment the play song and then we pass in the the name of the tune that we want to play which is happy birthday now if we want to play that faster we can just adjust this sleep here if we want it to be slower we can also adjust that sleep duration so that's the buzzer demo so next is the cake so let's have a look at the cake so the cake piece of code will simply draw on our little rgb led display picture of a cake so let's run this and then we'll have a look at how it does this so if i press run i'll turn down the house lights if i turn those house lights down and then run this again we can see it kind of looks like a cake. There's like two layers of cake with some sponge in between and there's three little candles on the top. Okay, so this code is a bit more involved. So the first thing we do is we bring in a couple of Pimeroni libraries which are helpers for using the RGB LED display. We then set up the RGB LED display using SDA2 and SCL3 which is the GPIO pins that they connect to. That's the data and the clock lines and this is because it's a nice squared C device. The next thing we do is we draw our cake. So what I've done here is just created a little list. So Y is the, the yellow for the tops of the candles, white is the stems of the candles, then we've got the white, red and 
and white for the Victoria sponge cake that the cake is. Next we have a draw cake function so what this will do is it will set the RGB values to be zero, it'll set the row to be zero and then for each row in our cake which is here it'll go through and it'll draw each of the, the pixels in that. So for each column in the, the row we will say if the colour is yellow then set the RGB values to be the yellow colour, if it's white set it to white, if it's nothing set it to black and if it's R set it to red and then we do matrix.setpixel row columns RGB to draw that pixel and then we just increment the columns and increment the rows in our little loops and then finally when we actually set the pixels it doesn't light the pixels up on the display immediately only when we call the update function does it do that and that's actually quite a lot faster if we do it at the end rather than each individual time that we light up the pixels you get a, little bit of a flickering effect if you don't do that we have a, another helper function which is called clear and that simply just clears the display and then updates it and then the last piece of code is just so that if we run this script it'll draw the cake sleep for a second and then clear the display so let's run that one more time you can see there there's our little cake so next up um, I've created an entire font uh, using a tool called OmniGraffle so I painstakingly decided on each individual pixel to light light up for a uppercase and a lowercase version which is quite a challenge in a 5x5 five five display but it is doable so I think S was a, a tricky character to do but it displays just fine. So what I've then done is I've taken each one of these and basically put them into a Python script so what I've done is I've created a dictionary which is a list of key value pairs and for each of the keys which is like a space is nothing so we don't display anything and we want that space to be three pixels wide that's why we actually set this to be three pixels wide and it's always going to be five tall whatever we do so we just have to set all the pixels in that three by five uh, to be zero. Next character is a capital A so you can see A and that's the key and then the value for this is if you look where the ones are that represents the A and the zeros is just the white space behind them. We've also got all the rest of the characters A, B, C, D, E, F, G you know the alphabet uppercase lowercase and if I keep on scrolling we'll find that there's some extra characters as well so I've also got the numbers zero to nine and then I've got some other characters pound signs at signs dollar signs oh, percentage carrots, dashes, left arrows and right arrows, speech marks, pipes and I think that's about it. So with that font we can then import that into a piece of code that can understand this. Let's open up a scroll. So I've created a scroller class so I can uh, scroll any text I want. So there's a couple of things that are internally used here so we have an offset for just figuring out where if we have a 5x5 five five display where on the offset are we going to display this message. We're going to have a gap which is how many pixels between each of the characters. We'll set that to one. We can set a hue value which is like the colour temperature, the saturation and brightness as well. It's much easier to work with HSV, hue saturation and value. Values rather than RGB when you're working with colour, uh, with, with saturation and brightness, they're much easier to adjust. And then we have uh, the number of rows and the number of columns because we refer to that throughout. Then there's two helper functions, one that will set HSV to RGB value so you can convert from HSV to RGB so that will return red, green and blue. And then we have the opposite way around, we will have a RGB to HSV so we pass in RGB and what we get back is the hue saturation and value figures for that. We then have a clear that will go through the matrix and it will just set everything to be black to be empty and then we have the display character this is the main workhorse of our code. So the display function does all the work of displaying our text on the display. I'm not going to go through this in painstaking detail if you want to check this out you can download the github repository and have a look yourself or you can just use it and it will display your messages fine. So we then have a show message so we can simply just display a message a piece of text we can say what this, what position we want to show that on and also if there's a particular colour that we want to have that in. And then finally at the very end I'll just have a message that's happy birthday Alex. I'll set the hue to be zero which is just red to begin with and then we have this display birthday message birthday message and then each position in the start five which is the number of pixels so that we have it coming from the, the right hand side scrolling left and it's just the length of the message plus five give it an offset and plus one as an extra space at the end and then we just cycle the colors through that's what this hue stuff does here we clear the display we then scroll the message and we update the display and we uh, let it go around the loop so let's give this one a go and see what happens so what i will have to do i'll just have to say birthday message I need to fix a piece of code there let's try that again so there we go so it says happy in lowercase birthday with a capital B and then Alex with a capital L and everything else is lowercase and it has an exclamation mark as well. And then that's it. That's the code run. So if we bring all these things together now, if we bring our touch sensor to, to start the thing, it's then going to flash the uh, the cake. It's going to start playing the happy birthday. And after it's finished happy birthday, it will scroll the message across. So let's bring up this one. This is the happy birthday code. And let's give this a go and see what happens. It's waiting for me to press the sensor. So let's try that.
there we go and it'll scroll the message changing the colors using that little hue cycle that's in our code really really pleased with how this works there's a little cake flashing at the very end as well so i hope you enjoyed this video and i shall see you next time bye for now